This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squeeze Kids, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Monday, March 29. In Squeeze Kids today, high hopes for high tide in Suez. France's famous breadstick. Australia's fastest man and the best cubby house ever. That's what's making news, kids style. The Lowdown. Have you ever been in one of those traffic jams that seems like it will never end? Maybe you've gotten caught in a Christmas or Easter holiday traffic snarl or a long queue of cars as you do the school drop-off. That's what's happening, but on an epic scale, in the Suez Canal, as one of the world's biggest container ships continues to block traffic along one of the world's most important shipping lanes. It's been almost a week since the ship called the Ever Given drifted off course in the Suez and became stuck. On Saturday, no fewer than 14 tugboats were involved in the effort to try to shove the ship off the side of the canal where it has been wedged since Tuesday. And it moved a teensy bit. There are about 300 ships backed up on either side of the stranded ship, creating a massive marine traffic jam. The Suez Canal in Egypt is a man-made shipping lane, connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. It's a direct route from Asia to Europe, meaning ships don't have to go all the way around Africa, which is what a lot of ships are now doing instead of getting caught in the traffic jam. And that's a journey that takes an extra 10 days. Authorities will try to move the Ever Given again this morning on the next high tide, and they have their fingers and toes crossed. Meanwhile, lots of people have been having lots of fun with the traffic jam, with one Twitter user creating a very funny pretend traffic report, like the ones you hear on the radio every morning. There's a link to it, and also to photos of the stranded ship in today's episode notes. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in France, where a push is on to have the humble baguette heritage listed with the United Nations. What in the world of breadstuffs am I talking about? I'm talking about the baguette people, only the most wondrous breadstick in the world. Crunchy on the outside, light and fluffy on the inside, and an important part of the daily diet of millions of French men and women and children. France this week submitted the baguette to be included on an international cultural heritage register. The cultural heritage of a country is made up of all the things the people there do or eat or drink or say or sing or dance or the traditions that they celebrate that makes them unique or special. And because the French have been baking baguettes for centuries, and an estimated 10 billion, that's billion with a B, are eaten by the French every year, it's been decided by French authorities that it's time to try to protect this important tradition by seeking cultural heritage status. Hmm, just talking about baguettes makes me hungry. Try it with lashings of salted butter. You won't be sorry. Sport time! So, you reckon you can run fast? Do you smash out a good time in the cross country? Or maybe beat all the other kids in the playground at lunchtime? Chances are you're not quite as fast as Sydney cider Rohan Browning, who this week turned in a blistering performance at a Queensland race meet to run 100 metres in 10.05 seconds. It means 23-year-old Rohan automatically qualifies for the Tokyo Olympics, where a race time of 10.08 seconds is required to make the cut. So he got there by three one-hundredths of a second. That's faster than the average eye blink. The sprint gave Rohan the third fastest time in the history of the Australian men's 100 metre sprint. And it should mean Rohan is the first Aussie to run in the Olympic 100 metres for 15 years. Go you good thing. 
There's a link in today's episode notes to Rowan's Olympic qualifying run. Squeeze Kids Salutes. As a dad, you just want to do stuff that makes your kids happy. Mostly. I put the tent up in the backyard yesterday as a test run for our Easter camping trip. But that's nothing compared to the epic effort a Canberra dad has gone to to make his kids happy. Scott Finch's three kids are huge fans of the animated movie Up. So much so that when it came time to build them a cubby house in the backyard, Scott built an exact replica of the house from the movie. And it's epic. It took him months to build and cost a small fortune, but the result, as you will see from the photos in the link in today's episode notes, is most certainly worth every hour and every cent. He's even gone and put a big bunch of helium balloons out of the chimney. And because he works in IT, he's added the coolest touch of all. Full Wi-Fi connectivity in the mini house for when the kids want to have a sleepover in the cubby house and stream movies. Scott Fincher, we salute you. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. In which country is the Suez Canal, where a container ship is currently causing a massive traffic jam? That's right, it's Egypt. Question number two. Which country has applied to have its breadstick stuck on a cultural heritage register? Yeah, it's France. Question number three. How fast did Aussie Rohan Browning run 100 metres at the weekend to qualify for the Olympics? That's right, he ran it in 10.05 seconds. That's fast. Shout outs. It's March 29. Here's one for all of you studying Federation in school this term. On this day in 1901, our first federal election was run and a bloke called Edmund Barton was elected as our very first Prime Minister. That was 120 years ago today. It's also a special day today for these squiz kids celebrating a birthday. Matt from Gosford East, Kingston from Exeter, Yonke from Cherrybrook, Delaney from Launton, Olivia from Bicton, Sophia from Wentworth Falls, Saskia from Waniassa, Sophie and Oliver from Sydney, Geoffrey from Dobroyd Point, Verona from Willoughby, and Fergus, who's listening all the way over there in Singapore. And some belated birthday shout-outs today to Joel from Clavelli and Isaac from Bathurst. Happy birthday, one and all. And today's classroom shout-outs go to Ms. Preeti's 5-6-P class from Mossvale Public School, Class 5-RG and Ms. Green at Albany Hills State School, Class 5-6-W at Exeter Public School, 5-M and 5-W at St. Christopher's in Holsworthy, and a special shout-out to Class 5C from Warrington County Public School with their teacher, Miss Cato, who celebrated a birthday yesterday. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. Squeeze Kids is proudly supported by the Judith Nielsen Institute for Journalism and Ideas. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun. Free. Fresh.